Hello, my name is Clarence Hillard, and in this video we're going to go over some tips and tricks that you may have, may not know about in NetEdit. Uh, four tips and tricks that you, you may not know about in particular. Uh, so attributes, conformance rules, attributes plus conformance rules, and how you can use those in combination to get some pretty good stuff from NetEdit and your network, uh, as well as saving your search queries and how you can reuse those a little bit later, and a copy and paste mechanism within NetEdit as well. Uh, that you may not know about. So without further ado, I'm going to hop into the demo. Uh, this could be a two-part video, just depends on how long this takes, so stay tuned. So we're going to hop right into NetEdit, right here. So this is my NetEdit instance, and we're going to start off by talking about attributes and conformance. So if you're not familiar with the attributes are, these are additional tags that you can have on your network, or your devices uh, on your network. So right now you can actually go through and search the running configure the devices um, for anything that's in the running configuration of the devices right now. So if I actually go to my topology view here, give that a second to load, uh, I can search for, let's say, VSX. I want to see what devices have VSX. Right? I, can, I can type that in and search it, and that's just running via this, the actual running configure the devices. However, if I wanted to search for something maybe not so specific to the configuration, maybe the device name or the device's function or role, uh, that's where attributes come in. Right? So attributes are something that are custom in your network where you can create those and, and generate them and apply them to devices. So I have some configured already. Oops, I almost typed attribute. I meant to type access. Uh, yeah, so all caps, you know, true and it's going to automatically select three devices for me. So this is an attribute that I created already and I've applied to my devices. So that in combination with conformance rules, right? So that's what are we talking about? Um, so conformance rules are rules that are also specific uh, that you could generate and create on your network. And these are rules that for configuration that you want to exist on your devices. So uh, for example, I want, I typed VSX a second ago if I wanted VSX to exist on all of my aggregation devices, for example, I could say, hey, I, I would create a conformance rule, which is going to check the running config, and say, hey, if it's an aggregation device and it doesn't have VSX configuration, uh, let me know. But the only way to make that really specific is to have an attribute, for example, like access, that says, hey, this device is an aggregation device, or this device is an access device, etc., so, so on and so forth. And you can have all the different types, types of functions on your network that allow you to do this. Um, but I wanted to actually show you how I generate these and, and how they can be used in combination with conformance rules and all that fun stuff. So let's go over to settings, clear that out. Settings. And then we're actually already on conformance. Um, I'm going to go over attributes first, and then we'll come back to conformance. So these are some of the, the attributes that I actually have uh, running on the network already. Uh, these, uh, building one, controller, access, ag, core, these are the boolean type of attributes. So I actually click actions, oops, not actions, oops, the plus sign here. Uh, there's three different types of attributes, so I can give them any type of name, so in this case we're just going to do uh, demo. And I'm going to click type, so you can actually type in a text, and this is like a freeform text box. Right, so you can automatically type in whatever text, and the search attribute would then be demo plus whatever text is typed into the box down here, uh, similar to that attribute for the access that I have. Right, so I can also do this uh, for a list, and I have a comma separated list, and that would then generate a drop down where you can apply different attributes based on a drop down menu. And then the last one, which is Boolean, which is just true false. Right, so whatever my, my name is, it's going to be that name followed by whatever the value is. Right, so that's attributes in a nutshell. And you can apply them to devices, all that fun stuff. So we're going to cancel that. And I'm going to go over to... Where is my validation? There we go. So validation. So conformance rules. Like I said, these are rules that are set on your network. Um, and they are applied based on the running configuration of those devices. Whereas attributes are decoupled from that, that running configure the device. It's just connected to the device and it's locally specific to NetEdit. 
That's the big difference between these. But conformance rules checks the actual running configuration of devices. So I've already created some, so I've created a QoS policy. So here in my QoS policy, you can see it's kind of complicated, and we're going to go over that in a second here. But you can also see I have a device filter for this as well. So what I can do with this device filter is I can use those attributes that I just generated. So if I want to say, okay, access, true, and uh, whatever. <laughs> I don't know what else I'd put in there for this case, for this example. But I could say, and maybe the name of the device uh, is, you know, building asterisk, uh, because the search queries work on they work on regex. They use word regex for them, so I'm just throwing asterisk, so it's a wild card. So I'm saying, hey, if it's access true and the name happens to be building anything, uh, apply this conformance rule. And I can click OK on that if, I, if I'm OK with that. Right, so that's kind of the combination of using conformance rules in, in combination with that attribute as well. And that's really, really handy and powerful because now I can say, OK, all my access switches, you now should have this configuration or Maybe it's a QoS policy, maybe it's something else, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So you can get really, really crazy with this, and it's very powerful. Now, for the next part of this is the actual conformance rule. So this conformance rule is checking the running config of the access devices with this attribute and the name of building asterisk and saying, okay, do you have a QoS profile called test and the QoS schedule profile of test? Okay, if you do, it should have this policy below. And you might be looking and saying, okay, I have ACLs that are a thousand lines, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, this could be complicated and cumbersome for me to do this within, then, and must exist. Uh, so how would, I, how would I actually go about doing that? And so what I did is I actually created an Excel sheet that goes through how to... Uh, so when anything in a conformance rule falls within an interface configuration or within a subcontext, you're always going to need this within whatever that subcontext is, and then whatever you want to do underneath that subcontext. So what I've done is I've actually generated an Excel sheet that automatically does this for you. So you can see any of the configuration up here is global config, uh, so I don't need to put any parameters like this. And you can get all the parameters for how to create conformance rules, and I think there's a video uh, as well on specifically on conformance rules, so I don't want to get too in-depth with it here. Uh, but there's a way to make this a little bit quicker. And the way I've done that is I'm going to bring this Excel sheet over. Is I've actually used the concatenate uh, function in Excel. So here you can see I have a concatenate function. I also have an if uh, as well in Excel. And if I actually scroll over here, what's going on is I have pasted just the top level name of whatever the access list is. So in this case, I have access list camera. Actually, let me scroll down. Let's, let's keep it consistent with my, my QS profile, right? So what I've done here is I said, hey, okay, if you're in the, the QS profile of test, I've just taken that that grander configuration. So this is the not the sub config, and I've just drag and dropped it, right? In Excel, just all I did was drag and drop it, and I have the thins there as well. And then I have whatever my QoS policy is. So if it's ACLs, for example, like this, you just paste them in. And then this is going to be automatically generated for you. So if I wanted to add another one, I have a then here. So let's do the one as an example. Um, let's just yeah, drag and drop it. You can see it automatically generated that for me as well. Oops. So it says within this QoS policy, this, this, and this must exist. And then all you have to do from now uh, is just come over here, control C it, and then you have to drag and drop it in. Oops, let me move it all the way over. And then you would just copy and paste that into here uh, if you wanted to. So I'm going to grab a new line, and then you paste it in, boom, you're done. Uh, pretty simple. And I'll have this Excel sheet, I'll probably post it on Airheads, uh, because on YouTube you can't uh, post a document, so I'll post it on Airheads and then you would along with a link to the video and you can actually download this and use this for your own network as well uh, but I'm going to backspace that out so the two things I just showed you right 
so your ac your access attributes or your attributes in general, uh, you can use them in combination with your conformance rules. And then also it's very, very powerful to have your conformance rules be applied and generated for your ACLs. Right? So let's say you needed to update an ACL in the future, add an ACE to it. Um, you could use this conformance rule to then tell you, okay, this particular building is missing maybe two or three lines or something along those lines, right? Uh, so you can get very, very granular with this. And if I'm cool with this, I can click OK. But that's one tip, or two tips and tricks uh, in one uh, big, grander business uh, conversation for what you, how you want to use NetEdit. Uh, so the next one is saving your search queries, right? So I just said, uh, I just had some search queries up here. So I had the access attribute that I had. But let's say I was going to do an upgrade for my building, so I only have few buildings here, right? Uh, but if I was going to do an upgrade path, I would want to say, okay, ac upgrade my access devices, then my ag, and then my core. So how would I do that? And one way to do this is to manually select them every single time, but not everyone has uh, like 10 switches or how many I have here. Uh, lots, lots of customers have 200, 300 switches, and you want to save your search queries. You don't have to type it out every single time. So you can do that by doing this. You can do access. True and oops, that'd be all caps. Building zero one, and then we're gonna do uh, asterisk. All right. So we have two devices that are matching that search query. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna click this plus symbol right here. And what this is gonna do is now save the search query. So I'm gonna say call it upgrade path. Oh, I already have it typed in. So upgrade pattern. I'm going to click save. Oh, oh I think because right, I already have it. I already have one save like that. So let's let's type it. Upgrade pattern. Uh, building. Zero one. Building. Uh, zero one. Let's go access that. Save. So now I've saved that search query. So whenever I actually come down, I can actually clear this out clear that out, I can actually come over here, and I can see saved queries right here. And I can scroll down, and there's my other upgrade pattern, so I actually did it in the, the topology before. Uh, but here, I can actually click on that, and what that's going to do is it's going to populate it already. Right? So then I don't have to remember whatever you know the, the upgrade pattern is, or maybe you want to do the upgrade pattern of you know, building one, x2, etc, etc, etc. Uh, but you can also use these to, for your tiles as well. So you can say, okay, access true, building one, and then you can get a little bit more crazy and say, okay, and uh, firmware version, firmware modified, when, right? When was the last time these devices were modified? So it's really, really good for reporting and getting pretty crazy uh, and more specific uh, with NetEdit. So another great tip is always to save those search queries. Uh, this is one of the most useful ones I've found, but I'm sure there's more. Uh, useful ones as well out there, uh, but this is one of the ones that I use every single day. Uh, but always save your search queries if it's something you're going to be redoing and, and typing in quite often. Go ahead and save that. Uh, and lastly, uh, copy paste. So within NetEdit, there's a couple of ways you can just copy and paste configuration, right? So you have the, so I'm going to select this device here. You have the deploy solution, and then the add remove configuration. And you can just take, let's say you had a notepad file with some config that you already knew what the config was going to be. You can just paste that in here right? pretty simply. So I'm just going to do, like, for example, if I want to do router OSPF 1, or maybe, uh, for example, I think a better example would be something like a VLAN, right? I want to add a new VLAN for whatever reason. Uh, so VLAN 1000, I could, I could just paste in VLAN 1000, maybe interface VLAN 1000, and, and push that out to a device or I can select multiple devices and push out a bunch of configuration and this is just going to take that config and push it out. Right? So that's, that's one way people are pasting configuration in there and all I did was click preview on this uh, so you can see it. That's one way people are pasting configuration in and that works but another way you can do this is if I actually cancel this out. So let's say, uh, let's say my, my building 3 and my building 2 
we're going to be uh, they're going to be combined and they're going to be used as an aggregation switch. So what I can do is I can actually grab this device, edit configuration. He's essentially blank right now. He doesn't have very much config. And I can click this copy icon up here. And I can choose other devices running configuration. And I'm going to find my 8320. I think it's this guy. I'm going to grab his configuration. And what this is going to do, so I'm going to click OK, is it's going to actually grab the configuration of that other 8320 and paste it into this Building 3's device configuration. So you can see the host name. It's the first thing that's changed, right? So Building 01. Uh, was the configuration of the other device, but now if I was to push this config out to building three, it would become that device's host name as well, as well as the rest of the configuration that's in here. Right? So that's a quick way to automatically push configuration out to a bunch of devices. And this will be the last tip trick uh, that we have in NetEdit. So to, uh, to summarize, we went over attributes briefly at a little bit of a higher level. Conformance levels at a pretty high level uh, as well, but how you can use those in combination to do some pretty powerful stuff within that uh, Then we also went through saving your search queries and how that could be very, very useful. And then lastly, we went over the copy and paste. So with all that uh, information, uh, that concludes this video. So thank you for taking the time to listen to me.